My name is Eric Small. This video is one of a set of short tutorials directed towards the new Cinema 4D user. These tutorials will be brief overviews of various aspects and concepts within the software. Continuing with the topic of tags, one very important tag that is found within Cinema 4D is the vertex map. If we have a relatively high polygon or high density geometry here, if we make this editable, we now have the ability to access the vertices. These vertices can be, uh, can be mapped onto the surface, which can then be used for a variety of reasons or a variety of purposes, such as masking out materials or masking the influence of a deformer. If we have a polygon or a vertex selection, we can go to select, set vertex weight. And by default, we'll be set to 0%. If we set this to 0%, we see that everything turns red. If we were to continue with that same selection, and this time we set the vertex selection of that we have to 100%, we now see that the 100% area is uh, now turns yellow. So if we were to use this as a mask to reveal different colors, uh, we could use this within our materials, whether it's the standard material or if it's the redshift material. Likewise, if we wanted to, let's say, use a displacer again and move the displacer as a child of the plane and add in, instead of a noise this time, I will just use a color. And what this will do is it will essentially push the, the whole plane straight up. If we go into our fields, instead of creating an actual field here, we have the ability to simply grab the vertex map that we created. And now we see that where the vertex map is pure yellow is the only part that is being affected by the displacer. If we want to see that a little bit more clearly, we can also, instead of the color, we can add in the noise. And I will add a subdivision surface make that as a child and now we see only where the vertex map is 100% uh, is the displacer being uh, actually affecting the geometry. We can use the paint tool in vertex map mode. I'm going to set it to smooth and I'll do a few more iterations and I will apply all. It goes from a very harsh yellow to red to smoothing out the influence of this vertex map where we now have this nice smooth gradient going from yellow to orange to red and that allows it to be a bit more of a gradual change from the non-influence of the displacer to where the displacer is influencing the surface. Within the vertex map itself we also have the ability to use fields by default, when you activate the use fields, this freeze uh, is what's added in here initially, and that is just what you had originally applied as the vertex map. If we want, we can delete that, and we can add in a field, let's say our circular field, or spherical field, and now we have the ability to move this circular field. We have the ability to animate this freely if we wanted to uh, across the screen. And now we have this spherical field of influence of where this displacer is actually deforming the geometry uh, moving through space. There's lots of different field options and they work all the same for masking deformers, masking vertex maps, masking uh, point selections and then these can this vertex map can as we said earlier also be used within materials to mask either colors displacement transparency anything of that nature these uh, fields can also be stacked with one another so if we've got the spherical field that's moving through space and then i also have this box field I have the, uh, these mixing modes here, just like we would have in, let's say, Photoshop, where I can multiply, I can subtract. So now I've got this box field that has this 
circular spherical field moves through where the box field is is currently subtracting so we get no vertex map being applied where that box field is likewise if we set that to add now Whoa. we have the spherical field adding to the box field as it passes by 